I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am David D., pastor at IM Church. I'm so honored that you've taken time to listen to this message today. And I know that God will bless you. And I know that God will open your eyes. Today we are talking about a very important subject, bondage. How to break bondages in our lives. The enemy is an enemy that fights and binds us. So every time when the enemy comes, he fights, but he wants to bind you. So when you are bound, then you are moving in circle. You are confined in one space. Maybe in your life, you feel like in my career, I'm not going higher in life. I am a tither. I am a giver. I serve a church, but nothing is happening. My life is stuck. I want you to know that you are fighting an enemy that has what I call bondages. He's carrying chains with him. He wants to bind every believer not to move. So this is our last part of our series. This is war is our seventh message. So if you have, you want to listen to other uh, uh, six messages on this is war, please. There's, there's, there's part one. Now this is part seven bondage. It's part of one series. May God bless you as you do so. Can we just start by prayer and then we'll get into it. Lord, we thank you for this time. I thank you for the opportunity to share the word of God. May you speak to us. Open our eyes right now and open our ears in Jesus name. Amen. Our key verse is Act 16.25. The book of Act, chapter 16, verse 25. I will read. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosed. Amen. I like that part that says immediately. So when the enemy attacks you, he wants to bind you so that he derails you, he delays you, and he blocks you. But there's an anointing that brings a sudden breakthrough in our lives. And today I want to make a prayer as I, as I will at the end of this message that may the Lord break the chain of delays. Every chain that has, been, has bound you, it shall break by the end of these teachings. Amen. Common types of bondage. Common types of bondage. Let me give you five. Number one is weakness. That's what we're going to talk about today. The bondage of weakness. Demonic bondages of weakness. Number two, addiction. Addiction. We're going to talk about that also. Number three, curses. This one is already available on our platform, on our YouTube channel, church. Go and look for a message how to break the curses. Number four, poverty. Poverty. This is another bondage. Also, it's available on our YouTube channel at church. I am Church SA. Go and look for a message how to break this, the spirit of poverty. Number five, mindset. Limited mindset is also available on our YouTube channel. So today, we're only going to focus on the two of these types of bondage. Weakness and addiction. Hallelujah. So, I want you, let's start by just looking look, look into this. Believers cannot be demon possessed. That I want to say it clear from the beginning. Understand. Because possession is ownership. Jesus lives inside of every Christian. Jesus is the owner of every Christian. So being possessed, it means someone is possessing the, your heart. So believers cannot be possessed. They will have to fall, uh, denounce Christianity, fall from grace. Then the enemy will enter them. Make an example like in a house. When you are staying in a house, uh, uh, for another family to reside in your, in your resident or to stay in your house, you will have to do what we call evacuation. You have to move out. 
you'll have to sign the ownership of the house to somebody else or a contract, title deed, whatever. So it's a process for someone to be demon possessed. All believers have the Holy Spirit in them. But a believer can be influenced, tormented, or even bound by demonic spirits. Now, I want to explain that. When you're influenced, which means you're a Christian, but you keep doing things that shows demonic signs. You're a Christian, but you are cheating on your, on your wife. It means something is wrong with you. There is something influencing you because that's not the Holy Spirit. Tormented. So which means every now you're a Christian, but things, they just not get, they're not happening in your, in your life. You, you keep going through uh, 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 this dilemma after this dilemma. Demons are clearly tormenting your life. You're a Christian though. You have opened a door to Satan. Maybe you have consulted uh, Sangomas. You know, maybe you have done something, fortune tellers, you know, magician, you have done something and then the enemy, he's using those things to torment you. A Christian is struggling with nightmares. A Christian is struggling with this and that, this and that. Okay, so it means you're tormented. Being bound, it means you are struggling as a Christian. Maybe you're smoking. You can't stop smoking, but you're a Christian. Your name is written in the book of life. The spirit lives inside of you, but you can't stop smoking. You can't stop fornicating. Whatever it is, you are bound. So a Christian can be influenced, tormented, and bound. Sinners are fully possessed by Satan because sinners are dead spiritually. Sinners are dead spiritually. So if you want to uh, uh, find somebody to love and you say, oh, there's no one in our church or there's no one who is a believer, I will pick any brother who is not a Christian, then you are in a relationship with someone who is dead spiritually. Because the scripture says, the head of your husband is Christ, and the head of Christ is God. Now, if your husband is not born again, now Christ can be his head. So, where are you going to report him if he is not the head? So, I want you to get that very clear. Believers cannot be possessed, but the enemy will keep trying. He will influence you so that you fall. He will torment you so that you fall. He will bind you so that you fall. His agenda is to make you to fall from the grace. Leave the church altogether. Fall from the faith. Don't be a Christian. That is the enemy. That is the plan of the enemy. Now, what brings demonic bondage in our lives? What brings the chains from the devil? They, I'm going to give you just 10. There are many, but let me give you 10. Can you please write down because it's very important information. This information is part of our new book that is coming in 2022. The power of prayer, the Holy Ghost. The power of prayer, the Holy Ghost. All right. So you need to get that book when it's out. This information is also in that book. Number one. What brings demonic bondage? Number one is willful sinning. Willful sinning, which means you're living in sin knowingly and you are okay with it. That's number one. Every time when you sin knowingly and you keep sinning and you don't mind the consequences, it will bring the bondage in your life. Number two, you were part of an occult or you are part of an occult. An occult is a group that practices magic or evil. Occult. All right. Number three, inheritance. Ungodly inheritance. When somebody has given you a statue, maybe a statue of a, 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 a a particular a Buddha statue, a mermaid statue, whatever, and it's an ungodly thing. Maybe you inherited it's part of uh, at home, or maybe it's just an ungodly practice and some tradition that you do at home. Uh, 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 um, it, that inheritance can be an access for the enemy to bring bondage into your life. Uh, you know, somebody asked me once and said, "But uh, 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 Christians." You know, um, cannot really be, uh, be, 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 I mean, can, cannot be bound by these things, these ungodly things. They, a Christian cannot even be cursed. 
You know? Now, I know what the person means because Christ, he died so that we can be free from curse. Okay? But let me tell you something. There are consequences of, you know, for our action. If, you, if you're a Christian, tongue speaking, but you are disobedient to your father and your mother, you are, you, you are doing something totally opposite, you know, from what your parents are asking you. Are you telling me there will be no consequences? The enemy will use that to come and accuse you and to bind you because you are living in disobedience. So be careful. You can't say I'm a Christian, but then gives me a right to go around fornicate or steal. Or make an example, you go, you, you find a couple, they are married, and then you're busy. Now you are having an affair with one of the with, 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 with a guy or with a lady, but they are married. And you're telling me there will be no consequences? No, there will be consequences. Yes, there will be consequences. So you you can be bound by ungodly tradition and godly practice number four unforgiveness it brings bondages okay bitterness scratches and hate trauma trauma number five distress and overwhelming events that's trauma distress overwhelming events you know they can bring demonic bondage number six abuse abuse it can be physical abuse sexual abuse emotional abuse it brings it can bring demonic bondage if somebody was raped out of that they can be bound even when they are christian now even now let's say they are married it happened many years ago but because the enemy is tormenting a person the enemy is using that situation because the enemy is very wicked he's the one who brings the attacks and then he's the one who brings the bondage and he's the one who will keep tormenting you for the rest of your life so sexual abuse number seven sexual immorality sexual immorality that is sex outside marriage all types of sex are everything if you practice sexual immorality sex outside marriage you are in danger of having bondages in your life demonic bondages number eight i was talking about it now curses and objects you know cursed objects when you have things um that you got from the witch witchcraft maybe you have a necklace uh, you have a rope around your, your your body around your hands there are things that you continue to do these things they have a way of bringing demonic bondage in your life number nine addiction addiction when you can't stop doing harmful things you are bringing demonic bondage in your life and the last one number 10 false religion false religion Every time when you are involved in a religion that excludes Jesus Christ as the way to God, then you are bringing demonic bondage. When you are in any religion or any type of a church that doesn't have Jesus as a son of God, you might be in a false religion. So the bondage of weakness. So today we're talking about the bondage of weakness. James 1 from 13 to 14 james 1 from 13 to 14 let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of god for god cannot be tempted with evil neither tempt he any man but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and is enticed he's enticed Every person is bound by their own desires. Okay? The enemy uses your weakness to bind you. Your desires, they lead you to temptation. And temptation leads to bondage, which means they lead to chains. Many believers are bound, but they are proud to ask for help. They are proud to say, Lord, help me. We judge people who are weak. So if, if somebody can say, I am weak in this area, you'd always look at them funny. But it is important to acknowledge when you are wrong, to acknowledge when you are weak and seek help. 
Of course, you start by praying, but also you can seek help from a brother, from your pastor, from a sister, from someone who's more mature than you. The sin that you hide will grow to become a bondage. Know you are bound. You, how do you know you are bound? You know you are bound if you can't stop. You can't stop. You pray about it, you keep doing it. You fast, you keep doing it. You, you can't stop. Well, the good news is that every bondage can be broken. Every chain can be broken. And I'm here to tell you that. Every curse can be broken. Every bondage can be broken. Every weakness can be broken. Now, as I want to close, because I want to pray with you. How do I break this bondage, the chain of weakness over my life? How? Number one, humble yourself and acknowledge you need help. Humble yourself. James 4 verse 10. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. The Lord will break every chain over your life. But you need to acknowledge it. Stop acting holier than other people while you know you are struggling. Number two, how do you break the chain? Confess your sin and ask the Lord to cleanse you. Confess and ask. First John 1 verse 9, it says, If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That word all is key. Just by acknowledging, by confessing, by asking God to forgive you, he, he will cleanse you of all. He will break the chain. So it begins by repentance. Amen. There's a message we did a few weeks ago that is titled, Be Holy. I recommend you go and check it out. It's available on our online platforms. Be Holy. Go and check it out. It will help you when it comes to the issue of repentance. Number three, how do I break the chain of weakness over my life? You need to pray and fast regularly. Pray and fast regularly. You must be a person... A Christian must fast at least once a week. It's healthy, number one. Number two, it deals with your flesh. It, so uh, fasting in, in Isaiah 50, 58 verse 6, it says, Is this not the fast that I've, I've chosen? To loose the band of wickedness. Do you see that? When you want to break the, 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 the weakness, you fast. Isaiah 58 verse 6. To loose the bands of wickedness. To undo heavy burdens. If you've been carrying sin and guilt, it's time you go to fasting. If you fast once and it keeps staying there, go two days, go three days. Keep going for it. Prayer and fasting will undo heavy burdens. And let the oppressed go free. If you are bound, you can be free by fasting. And let, and let ye break Every yoke, which means break every chain and breaks every chain. Isaiah 58 verse 6. Jesus says this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. There are things that you need to deal with in fasting. And I cannot do it for you. You cannot just come for prayer. Oh, pray for me, pastor. I need a deliverance session. No, what you need is fasting. What you need is repentance. What you need is humbling yourself. That's what you need. There's no quick fix. Nobody's going to lay hands on you, lay under the power. You come out, you are clean. No, humility is the key. Confessing and asking God to, to forgive you is key. Prayer and fasting, your own fasting. Don't wait for church fasting. is key. Number four, how do you break the chain of weakness? Renew your mind by studying the word of God. Renew your mind by studying the word of God. Saints, the more you study the word, hmm, it's the more you have, you have more of Christ in you. Um, aperi, you are wearing Christ. The more you read the word, the more Christ is alive in you. The more you pray, 
especially praying in tongues, praying in the spirit, your spiritual vocabulary matures. You become better in hearing the Lord, in discerning the Holy Spirit you and, and hear his voice because you spend more time in prayer and you study the word. You understand his word. You understand his voice. So study the word, listen to the word daily. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night to do and to and observe everything that is written according to it then you will be prosperous you'll make your way successful you will prosper every time when you're studying your weight you are getting closer to prosperity second last how do i break the chain of weakness guard your heart guard your heart okay which means be careful of what you hear be careful of what you see. Stop letting every junk to come in your in your head. Social media doesn't have to be your daily bread. You can't be. All you do is to just pick up everything that has been said. You need to protect your heart. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 to 20. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are not on your of your own, Mzalwan. I'll show you the Holy Spirit is the one that lives inside of you. So, guard your heart. Don't let every junk come into your spirit by the movies you watch, by the books you read, by the, 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 the social media you are consuming, whatever. Guard your heart. And the last one is I close now. Seek the Lord and forsake the sin. Seek the Lord and forsake the sin. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. We know that mercy is it means you are not getting the punishment you deserve. The Lord will have mercy when you return unto him. And it continues, it continues and it says, And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Abundantly pardon. Listen to me. As I'm talking to you right now, the Lord is ready to pardon everything he's, that you have done. He's ready to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. It will take humility for you to pray with me and to change your heart. You need to do that or else you keep going back. You keep going back. There are many Christians who live like sinners. It's not all right. The enemy has a plan to remove you out of the faith. He wants you to fall away and denounce and renounce Christ. That's what the enemy is trying to do. Don't allow this lukewarm lifestyle to continue from today. There is abundant, abundant pardon that is waiting for you. You just need to receive it. So now, I want to pray now. There are addictions that people are having. So now, if I call you addiction, you must be part of this prayer. So there are, I want to just pray for about nine, eight, eight types of addiction. Number one, you're addicted to internet, which means social media, television, anything has to do with internet. Or you're addicted to food fast food junk food whatever type of food consuming basically it can be shopping you're a shopaholic always buying things even if you don't need your wardrobe is falling of clothes that you you bought and you can you can you can't even wear all of them you are a shopaholic you eat non-stop so you are you have an addiction number three you have a sexual addiction sexual addiction lasts pornography uh, multiple partners sexual partners you I, I, we need to pray because this must change you can't be a christian and go on this way number four 
alcohol, nicotine, and drugs. Alcohol, you abuse alcohol. Number four, uh, number five, five, coffee. Coffee is an, another addiction. I, I'm not saying coffee is evil. All right. I'm saying it's an addiction. Ca ca caffeine drinks. I I'm falling on this group. I have a problem. I drink coffee on a daily basis. The Lord must help. Number, five, number six, gambling. Gambling. And games like lottery, playing lottery. Okay. These things, I'm not saying they are evil. I'm saying they will bring a bondage. They will bring an addiction. You cannot be part of it. Anything that you can't stop doing, you need prayer on it. Number seven, anger, short temper, bitterness. There are people who are addicted to anger. You want to be angry every day, always angry. There must be someone you shout at. The, you short temper. Number, number, number eight, last one now, workaholic or lazy. Workaholic or laziness. It can be an addiction. You just fall asleep when you get to the office. You fall asleep when you're trying to study your book. You fall asleep when you're trying to study your Bible. Funny enough, when you watch a movie, you can watch for three hours. You can watch for seven hours. Soon as you're trying to study the books, your, your school work, you fall asleep. Soon as you're trying to read the Bible, you fall asleep. Which means there's a spirit that we need to break. Can I pray with you? If you are part of these things I've mentioned, you need to break the chain of weakness. Addiction is internet, food, which is consumption, sex, alcohol, caffeinated drinks, gambling, anger, workaholic, or just laziness, where you just feel lazy every time. Can I pray with you? If that's you, I want you to right now as you're listening to my voice, I want us to pray together. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to change you. Ask the Lord to remove this chain. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, you said if we humble ourselves, you will lift us up. Right now, we are praying, Lord. I pray for my brother and my sister. I pray, Lord God, as they are humbling themselves today. I pray, Lord, I break every chain of weakness in their lives. I break every bondage of weakness, every demonic spirit that has caused them not to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Lord, help us to get to the place where we confess and we ask you to cleanse us from all our righteousness. Father, give us the hunger to pray and fast weekly every now and then, fast regularly to break the bands of wickedness because the enemy always try to put heavy burdens. But in fasting, in prayer, these things are broken. Lord, I pray that our minds shall be renewed. From today, the Bible is going to be our friend. We will listen to the word. We will read the Bible. We will always meditate on the word. Father, help us to watch the music we listen to, the movies we watch. Let's guard our heart. Let's not allow things that will alter our character and make us to become people that you did not meant for us to be. Help us Lord to seek you while you may be found. Help us Lord to call on you while you are still near. Help us Lord to forsake any thoughts that we are perfect, that we are okay while we are living like sinners. From today I pray that my life will change. Help me Lord. Father I break every addiction right now. I'm praying for any Anyone who is uh, addicted to internet games, social media, television, I break the chain right now. The addiction of consumption, being that it's food or shopaholic, but you are always uh, want to eat and always want to buy things even if you don't need. I break that spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against the spirit of lust, the pornographic spirit, that demon, I break it now in the name of Jesus. That bondage, it is broken now. Be free. Anyone who's been living a life that is not pleasing unto God, 
sexual sins. I pray that today you repent. If you are in a relationship that is not pleasing unto God, change or walk away from that relationship. In the name of Jesus, I break any bondage, demonic bondage of alcohol, nicotine and drugs. I break it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Any unhealthy food, drinks, caffeine, coffee, any excessive drinks that will bring harm into our bodies. Right now, I break that addiction in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against the spirit of gambling, the spirit that causes us to always waste money and invest carelessly. I break every bondage of gambling now in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against the spirit of anger, short temper, bitterness, hate and grudges. I Break every chain of anger in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are always want to work, busy body, workaholic, can't stop. They can't even spend time with their families. They can't even enjoy what you have blessed them with. I pray today that every Every chain that has bound them is breaking now. The spirit of laziness, falling asleep while you are studying your schoolwork, falling asleep while you are studying the Bible, falling asleep while you are trying to do your business. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this message. I give you the glory, Father. I give you the praise. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I hope you are blessed by this message. I'm going to ask you that continue to share these messages. Somebody needs to hear this prayer. Somebody needs to hear this message. Share it. Bless somebody else. If you'd like to be part of a uh, 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 give to, uh, in our ministry at IM Church, please inbox us and then we will give you the details of how you can sow in our ministry so that we continue to preach the gospel on this platform and then if you would like to visit us we are in Pretoria, South Africa in Hatfield. We look forward to see you and we cannot wait to fellowship with you face to face. We thank you. May you have a wonderful day. May God bless you. Amen.